Good morning, beloveds. So I woke up to the full growl of thunder and lightning and all of that, and it was raining, and so we were like, should we, is it okay to go to the gym? And right as we were walking up the driveway, he responds, well, I don't have to drive in it. What do you think? But we were already walking up the driveway because um, the, th the, the thunder and the lightning had kind of stopped. It was still dark, but it was still raining. So we got to the gym, did the workout, uh, and as we're getting in the car, to, and it had kind of stopped raining, and as we are uh, getting in the car to come home, we heard a th roll of thunder. And so it was like, it was weird because it was like battleship gray behind us and blue skies in front of us. We were like, it's going to be one of those days. Um, so, uh, yeah, that that's how my morning started out. And now, and, and I got, we, I don't know, we were just running a little late getting out of the gym. And so now I'm uh, running a little late. And so I was like, I'm just going to go do the live stream. Then I'm going to take a shower. Because normally I take a shower after going to the gym. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to wait. Um, and we have an interesting title today. So I, I look forward to seeing what, what, what this is about. Uh, and it kind of, the title kind of sounds like um, uh, an Ernest Holm title, but it's not. It's actually a Craig Carter title. I'm starting to get used to the Craig Carter's titles too. So, uh, so it is December 11th. Our title is Argumentation and Realization. So it's probably going to be about treatment. Uh, there is a spirit in people and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding. That is Job 32, eight. The second quote is all emerge from the one whose being is ever present and whose life robed in numerous, numberless forms is manifesting through all creation. That is the science of mind. Page 420. Silent our healing practice. One moment of, uh-oh, I don't know when it disconnected. So I'm just going to start, not the, I'm, I'm, I leave the quotes, but I'm, I'm going to start the, the, the reading over. All right. Uh, silence plays an important role in our healing practice. It probably is the weather. Uh, one moment of silent realization is worth all of the spoken word. Why then do we use words at all? to bring us to that moment of realization, because unless we can at least approximate inward images, that which we seek to realize, the realization has no model to follow. Realization is the fruit of recognition. When you realize peace, you will be at peace. It will be such peace as you have described and accepted. If, however, you are still anxious or if you have merely achieved a certain resignation, then real peace is not yet in you, and you should return to your speaking of words which have peace in them until at last you can be still and let that peace which passes understanding become your experience in the silence. When you do have such an experience, you see realization, you see why realization is greater than argumentation. Yet remember that each of these is an element in the building of a healing consciousness. We use argumentation to bring our awareness to the point of realization. And even if, and even if through practice one learns to achieve instant realization, behind this will lie all of the words of conviction one has ever uttered in argumentation. I contemplate now the goodness, the right action, and the nearness of God who is within me. I am immersed in beauty and truth. I am in tune with the infinite. I know that peace is the power at the heart of God. In God I live and move and have my being. God's power is the power. God's peace is the power at the center of me. And that is, like I said, it's Craig Carter. All right. So there's this one line in here. Um, because unless we can at least approximate inward images, that which we seek to realize, the realization has no model to follow. All right. And then he says, realization is the fruit of recognition. So the realization has no model to follow. So what he's saying is that there will come a time in our practice where we don't need words. There will come a time when we can instantly realize, we can instantly feel that which we are seeking. Um, but until then, here's this tool that we can use. And he called it argumentation. Basically, what we are attempting to do is talk ourselves into 
um, so the, which is why he said the realization has a model to follow. Basically, what he is encouraging us to do is paint word pictures. And I can't, I can't say it any more clearly than that. Or maybe I could. We'll see if I can figure that out. Paint word pictures. What is it that you want? Um, we had a soul session with Tracy Brown. She's amazing. I love her. She's a wonderful teacher. I've encountered her. She, uh, I've encountered her several times. And one of the, th one of the arguments that she was making is, is we can't currently imagine a world without racism. Okay. And so that's where we are using our words. We have to define what racism is and then define what not racism is. Or as Ibram uh, X says, uh, Ibram, yeah, I'm trying to quote somebody and I, I, I know his first name is Ibram and I'm like, what, what was his last name? It may be Ibram X. Um, but uh, what he says is anti-racist. It's like, it's not enough to be not racist. You have to be actively anti-racist. So, and that's his argument with peace. Well, if you don't know what peace is, if you can't describe a peace. And so that's one of the things. So th th we want to paint those pictures. And that's the same thing. Okay. So sometimes what we have to do is describe what the condition is that we are seeking to change. We describe the condition. And then we look the condition in the eye and say, well, what's the opposite of that? Or what would be the alternative to that? Because maybe we don't want the opposite. Maybe we want the alternative. Um, you know, Because sometimes the alternative of sickness is not healing. Sometimes it's not being sick. And that's not necessarily what we want either. So this, this go, bear with me. Um, so we're, we look at the condition and we describe the condition and we say, this is not what I want. Okay. So then we take the description that we've made of the condition and figure out what it is from that, that we want. Do we want the opposite of that? Do we want something different than that? And then we start to describe what it is that we want. So once we get fully past what it is that we want, um, now we've painted that picture with our words. We are talking ourselves into it. Okay. And that's what he means by argumentative. Um, it's, it's, we're talking ourselves into it. And that is really honestly what a realization is. Uh, a realization is, he says, the fruit of recognition. It's like, okay, so, um, this is what we want. We recognize what it is in the full fullness of its glory. And then we realize it. We accept it into our experience. And what we've done is talked ourselves into it. Okay. And that's the power of treatment. That is absolutely the power of treatment is where we use all of the words that we need to talk ourselves into the space. It's like, we're not trying to talk ourselves into the, because sometimes we don't, we, we don't know what we want. That was me, you goofball. Um, I scared the cat. Um, so we're painting the word picture. We are creating the model for the realization to flow into. All right. That is what he's talking about. And that is absolutely the power of treatment. Okay. So, uh, and that's why I liked that sentence so much out of all of it, out of all of everything that he said, um, that's why that sentence rings so true to me, because unless we can at least approximate in word images, paint the picture with your words. And if painting the picture with your words doesn't work and you can actually paint or draw or, you know, whatever, create the image, create the image of what it is that you see. And you are welcome to start with the condition. It's like, if you don't know what it is that you want, we'll start with the condition that you're working to heal. Okay. Say, all right, this is here. And that's what we call looking, looking, the, the, looking the facts in the face. It's like, we, we never ignore that this is what is, but we acknowledge that there's a greater truth behind it. And we talk ourselves to that greater truth. So, because unless we can at least approximate inward images, that which we seek to realize, the realization has no model to follow. Create the model in whatever medium 
makes the most sense to you. Realization is the fruit of recognition. Once you know what you want, you have a mental equivalent. It's a fancy word that we say. So, um, then you can move into the, into the silence of it. Uh, so that's what argumentation and realization, that is what he's talking about. Talk your, you absolutely are allowed to talk yourself into it. It's, it's, it's actually a bona fide tool to put in your tool belt. All right. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it is to, ex is, is to create that model in word images or in any medium that makes the most sense to you. That is, that is what we are doing here. That is what we teach here. That is the point of spiritual treatment. Um, it's to create the model, the mental equivalent, the feeling and to signal spirit of our willingness to accept it. Cause he did say that later on in the, in, in, in the, um, in the treatment, it's like, um, if you've merely achieved a certain resignation, that's not what we're going for. Go back and add more words, go back and add more words. So that is the mission today to create in word images, your model. Or like I said, in any medium you want, I, I've got, I know some pretty talented painters and if you can paint what you want, go for it. Uh, all right. So that is the mission today. The other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is, is a spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, occasionally it's, you know, pushing yourself and occasionally it's not pushing yourself. I got up today. I looked at the, I can't find my wrist brace for nothing. Um, I have no idea where they are and because I have two and I can't find either one of them. And I looked at the knee brace and I was like, you know what? I just don't want to do it today. Uh, and I didn't. And what he, and he mostly focused on my shoulders anyway, but, um, uh, there was nothing that he asked me that I, I didn't think I could do. And I think it, that was a loving, kind and compassionate thing for me to not wear the knee braces. Sometimes I think we, we, get, we will lean into things that we get, we use them as a crutch. And honestly, that's sometimes what it looks like. What is loving? What is kindness? What is compassionate? Well, sometimes it's giving up the crutch. Uh, and I think that's what my wrist has been telling me lately, which is why I keep losing that wrist brace. It's like, no, I need to breathe. I need to breathe. I need to have more of a, a full range of motion. I will remind you when you've hit the point that I'm too tired to deal with. Uh, and so that's it. Loving, kind, compassion, listening to your body. All right. Okay. Uh, but sometimes it looks like taking a nap, which I took yesterday was awesome. Yesterday was the most loving, kind and compassionate thing I could do for myself, which was nothing nothing. I got up, I went to the park, I played with the squirrels, I went home, I ate breakfast, and then I took a nap. And it was good. And there was stuff that I had stuff that I could do, but I had nothing that I had to do. So I worked on what I wanted to work on. But I took that day of rest and ran with it. And I that's sometimes you need to just take the day off. Um, I have other stuff to do today. And so, you know, I, will I take as much rest as I did yesterday? Probably not. But then again, maybe self-care is very important. We've just come through for, for me, that epic three months where I work three jobs. And so kindness, loving, compassion looks like rest, but it also looks like dessert. And it looks like calling a friend and it looks like making plans and it looks like self care and it looks like joy. It looks like joy. Um, so engage all of your senses, do the things that are loving, kind and compassionate for yourself. Practice on yourself. You are your own best test subject. You know, it's pretty much instantaneous feedback for yourself. Is this loving? Is this kind? Is this compassionate? So I'm, I'm, I talk about science because I, you know, that my undergraduate degree is science and I was in engineering and my degree is in anthropology and I'm a big believer in experimenting on yourself. Okay. I mean, a lot of things, if you want the answer, 
you have your test it on yourself. And so the science of mind is that's exactly what science of mind is. Test it on yourself. Test it on yourself. Road test of this stuff. Um, and it is about creating a habit. I mean, what better habit can you have than to be loving, kind, and compassionate with yourself? And when you are loving, kind, and compassionate with yourself, you can be loving, kind, and compassionate with anybody. Trust me. Sometimes we are our own worst critic, you know. So practice on yourself. Create that habit. Create that default setting. Create that first response. All right? And feel free to talk yourself into it if you need to. Use those words. Paint those pictures. Uh, all right. Um, the other things are do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like. For me, it looks like going to the gym. Please drink plenty of water. Hydration is important. Your brain will work better. Everything works better when your brain is hydrated. Um, get that early in your day bright light. Uh, today, definitely, I, you know, it was storming. So I was getting some of those bright flashes, but, you know, bright light early in your day. Reset those hormones. You will feel better. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep because I had some trouble falling asleep, but I did get good quality sleep. And that makes a difference. And that's partly about those hormones. Once I finally did get to sleep, I got good quality sleep. So, you know, that works too. Uh, all right. If there was anything else, <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to lean into the words of Ernest Holmes. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. Okay. I say it's a superpower. It's a superpower that absolutely every one of us have. Once we recognize that heaven is a state of mind, it's a state of consciousness. That's one of the reasons why Jesus says heaven is within you. It's a state of mind. Once you recognize that, once you learn to create that with your word images, your realization, your recognition, then you can create it any place. Once heaven ceases to be a place, we recognize that it's a state of mind, a state of consciousness. It can be any place. And if that is not the coolest thing ever, then I don't know what's cool. All right. Okay. And we can always take Emma's advice. You know, Emma Curtis Hopkins, look for the good and praise it. The power of gratitude is amazing. That's why we have a whole day dedicated to Thanksgiving. Gratitude. All right. Um, so we're moving into the social media part. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Please feel free to check all that out. I, I did work Surprise. on YouTube, uh, yesterday that, because I could do that resting. So that happened. Uh, all right. So, you know, and you want to know what's going on with the center? Email info at creativelife.org. Um, I don't know what I was about to say. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, get on the constant contact. The hot links are hot. They'll take you, if not to the information you want, to the person that will get, that can get you the information that you want. All right. I'm going to move on because I just, I saw a text message, but I didn't see what the text message is about. Now I'm curious. So, ah, there was something else. Oh, yeah. I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, a thunder and lightning day, a go dance in the rain, but not during the thunder and lightning day, <laughs> an enjoy the rain day, a go get wet day, or a keep yourself dry day, a good day, whatever kind of day you need. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark. You are a brilliant light. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a divine spark in whom God is well pleased and well represented. That is who you are. That is the truth of your being. I know the truth of your being. I know the truth of our being. And I hold the space for you to know the truth of your being. All right. So um, I will remind you that Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. Uh, take care of yourself. If you missed Reverend David's ordination, you can email him. And you can get to him through that 
uh, info at creativelife.org. Uh, or you can go to the website, which is creativelife. creativelife. create and request the link to the ordination. I believe he will it he will put it up somewhere where you will have it available. Um, but due to rules, it will be a private link. You will have to ask for it. Okay. All right. I think that's what I needed you to know. So take care of yourself. Know that you're loved and I will see you next time.